It's been a while since we've had some properly garbage gaming on this channel, but I think what's in this box may change that. Now in this box is the cheapest Microsoft Surface tablet available new, and I'm pretty excited to try some varyingly inappropriate levels of gaming on it. Oh, that, <laughs> that required a lot less force than I was expecting. And, hey, okay. Oh, they sent over the pen. And by they, I mean Micro Center that sent over the cheapest Microsoft Surface that they have. Thank you very much, Micro Center. Ma Oh yeah, what a beauty. Here is the cheapest new Microsoft Surface you could buy from a micro center. You can see here that it cost $400 new and it is a Microsoft Surface Go 3. Now what I find really interesting about gaming on this device is that it has Windows 11 on it. So we may have quite a big variety of games available to us to play on it, but we'll figure all of that out a little bit later. Uh, let's open the box and have a closer look at it. But first I wanna open the pen because that's fascinating. Oh, there's like a little tuggy thing. Does it does it all undo with one pull? No. Wow, the pen feels quite nice. It is plastic, but it's it's sturdy enough plastic. And then here we have what almost looks like a little felt tip, and then on the back we have a, like an eraser bit. Yeah, that looks like a reasonable writing utensil. Oh, that's a nice touch. We've got little graphics that show you where all the I.O. is and what it all does on the bit of, I don't know, is this like rice paper? Below that, we've got some bookies in here. And then this is, I'm assuming like the power cable and stuff. Let's have a look at that. Oh, it's actually got a very similar smell in the box to Apple products. You know that neutral clean smell? I thought you had to pay at least a thousand dollars for that smell. Oh, that's a cute little charger. Over here it's got like a foldy out bit with a very proprietary looking power plug, which is a bit naughty. Oh, this is quite a nice little tablet on the back. We've got the Microsoft logo, and it's like a really nicely finished metal. And ooh, this got this little stand that pops open so that you can kind of rest it on the table. And that is actually metal as well. And then on the bottom, we've got the proprietary connector for like attaching a keyboard to it, which doesn't come with this one because, you know, it's the cheapest model. Interestingly, the cameras are on the long edge of the device, which along with the bottom keyboard mount thing shows that its primary orientation is landscape mode, which hints at this being more a laptop tablet abomination hybrid thing than just like a straight up tablet which should make it pretty good for gaming, I guess. I don't know, we'll see. In terms of IO around the sides, there's, there's not a whole lot. We do have a power button up here with a volume rocker, but that's kind of all we have on the top of the device. I guess this is what that is. And then this is where most of our IO is. We have our proprietary power connector, which I don't know why that couldn't have just been another USB-C port, but you know, capitalism, I guess. And then here is our USB-C port. Hopefully we can get a video signal out of this type C because I have some ideas for that later in the video uh, and then finally we have our aux port which is a nice touch we can still plug headphones into the device but we don't care about any of this do we the specs is what gives us the indication of the kind of gaming carnage we can expect CPU wise we're working with an Intel Pentium gold 6500Y ah yes Pentium that would have gotten us real excited 25 years ago we also have a staggering four gigs of LPDDR3 RAM and 64 gigs of eMMC storage. This thing is looking like a real beast. Now I'm gonna be honest, I didn't do any research going into this video. Uh, I just saw that it has Windows on it, so we can probably do some gaming on it, but I don't know that for a fact. So we're, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to find that out together.
Oh, that's just Windows 11. Okay, so I, I think this has like S mode Windows 11 on it. So it's like a slightly lower power version of it. Uh, but hopefully that doesn't impact our ability to install like Steam and stuff. Uh, actually, I forgot. We got the pen with it as well. So we can... Ooh, oh, that is really weird. The pen starts registering before you touch the screen. But anyway, in terms of VD, we don't have anything extra on here. It's just Windows 11, but it makes sense. It's a Microsoft device. It's not the fastest device. If you do a thing that it didn't really expect you to do, it, it kind of freaks it out a little bit and it takes a moment for it to figure out what's going on. At this point, I discovered that in order to install any apps other than Microsoft apps, you need to switch out of S mode, which is as easy as just activating a thing, which is good. But first, let's see what kind of games we can play in S mode. But first, I desperately wanted a better way to interface with the Surface. Honestly, the first thing I want to do is plug peripherals into it. So let's, let's give that a try. Hey, Roblox is happening very slowly. I mean, the fact that it can't even load the thumbnails for the games, I feel like isn't a good sign. I mean, honestly, this is some playable Roblox action. It, it's not running exceptionally well, and I have no idea what the settings are or frame rate is, but this is kind of playable. Oh, oh, what's happened? Oh no! And with that, it was time to disable S mode and try and play some real games. Getting Steam up and running was surprisingly seamless. All I had to do was get some Switch out of S mode, and then I could install Firefox, MSI Afterburner, and Steam. I could even run games off of an external drive. But idiot proof setup process aside, can it actually run any of the games? No way, GTA 5 at 1080p-ish normal settings is actually running. I mean, running is a strong word, but still. A few moments later. Uh. Okay, that did not last very long. Maybe if we lower the resolution, it'll run a bit longer before it crashes. Well, we've made it further down the first street, so that's a good start. Uh, here, we're running at the equivalent of 720p. Oh no, it's crashed again. Oh, I actually think we got a full-blown system crash here. And not just the game, okay. <laughs> so it lasted like 10 seconds longer, but it took the whole system down this time. Hey, we got further. We're actually into downtown now, and it's still running. Now that the game is actually running, you can see that the CPU is bottlenecking the iGPU, which is one of my favorite things in the world when that happens, because <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. But um, yeah, look at that. We've actually got GTA 5 running. Now again, with this kind of test, when you start out with a high resolution where the system can't run it at all, and you get to a point where you have, you know, like 16 or 17 frames per second, it actually feels really playable then. Like, it's like, wow, okay, 16 frames per second feels decent. At least it's running, you know, we're playing, so oh, no, it's crashed. This is probably really stupid, but let's try Battlefield 5. It can render the loading icon, which is a good start, that's promising. Wow, we get to run the menus, which on a lot of these low powered systems is not even an option. So, I mean, <laughs> what? This is already better than expected. It may have been several lifetimes, but we've actually loaded into the deployment screen. Hopefully we can spawn before the game crashes. Oh, we're in this is by far the worst I've seen Battlefield 5 actually run, like in game. Yes, the menus and stuff work, but I've never seen it load in and give us a frame every two minutes. Oh, we got two frames there 
and we got kicked, I think, is what happened there. Uh, yeah, you lost connection. I'm, I'm assuming the game server realized that <laughs> someone was in there gaming on an easy bake oven and it just kicked us. Uh, so let me try single player quickly. Single player briefly launched, but once the game realized what hardware it was actually running on, it crashed pretty quickly. I then quite bravely tried Cyberpunk, which obviously didn't even launch, so I decided to try something quite a bit easier to run. This is honestly one of the oldest cliches on the channel. Little potato system struggles to run any games, but then runs the crap out of Half-Life 2. This is at just over 1080p, and we are getting over 60 frames per second, which actually is not as good as I was expecting it to run, to be honest. Half-Life 2 usually <laughs> runs better than this, but we'll find a way to make it run even worse in a second, but first, Let's just try the more demanding bit in the game. Just over 60 and Half-Life 2 is not, <laughs> is not amazing, uh, but let's make it run worse. And then just like that, we have a 48 inch 4K, potentially 120 Hertz tablet. Let's, let's make sure it is, no, it's running at 30 hertz. And unfortunately, 4K 30 hertz is the highest resolution the little iGPU in the Microsoft Surface can output, which in all fairness is probably not going to be a problem for the kind of gaming performance we're going to get from this thing at 4K. Now with GTA 5, I'm not entirely hopeful it's going to work, uh, considering that at 1080p, it could game for like 10 seconds and then would crash. But maybe, Maybe it was just underutilized. Maybe the tablet was just so offended by us giving it such a loser load that it didn't even want to try. And at 4K, it'll be so happy with the challenge that it'll run perfectly. Apply. Yeah, it, it just crashed. Wow, okay, down here in our little cave, it does run well enough for it to destroy our refresh rate foible that we have. So even though we're getting a respectable frame rate of over 60, it feels like garbage and there's lots of tearing. Again, we are just above the refresh rate problem that we have with the display. And honestly, that to me is actually kind of impressive. It is low settings, but it is 4K on the cheapest Microsoft Surface you can buy. And it's been essentially plug and play, right? So that's that's pretty cool. That looks real 1999 right there. Uh, let's actually crank the settings and see what that does. Has it crashed? Oh, no, it's just taken very long. Wow, it's made a huge difference to the quality though. Uh, and it's actually not impacted our frame rate that badly. It is running very similarly. We lost like, six or seven frames per second and that six or seven frames per second we can't utilize because of the refresh rate anyway so um yeah look at that we can actually run half-life 2 at high settings 4k and if you have a low enough standard this is playable which brings me to the end of the first bit of gaming carnage on the channel in a while, and it kind of made me curious about gaming on a high-end Microsoft Surface. Let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see that, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing to the channel to see more videos like this one, and maybe consider watching another video, a suggestion will pop up in a second, and until three seconds from now, bye-bye.